Hey guys, Bobby here, and just a year ago, I released the second iteration of my tutorial going over how to easily capture audio for your wedding films. And given that this is such an important topic that can have a huge impact on any film, I find it appropriate to update this every year or so. So without further ado, let's get into how to easily capture crisp clean audio for your wedding films in 2020. I find bits and pieces of this updated throughout the year, but I always want to have a comprehensive outline in one place. I'm going to break this down by time of day, showing you exactly what I use and where, but first let's take a look at the full array of audio gear that I bring. This kit can be had for about $800 or so new, but lots of this has been around for a while. You can certainly find them used or wait for sales that happen fairly often. You can also find some cheaper options that get the job done if you check out my link of gear that we use in the description. I have a Rode VideoMic Pro, which I actually don't use too often anymore as we don't use a lot of ambient audio, but it's a great option if that is your thing. Next are the lav mics and recorders, the Tascam DR10Ls with the mics that they ship with. You can find specific videos about these on my channel, but I love the dual recording option and the ability to split files into much smaller segments, which are saved frequently. Similarly, I have a DR10X, which I just released a video on. This works like the DR10L, but instead of a lav mic, it has an XLR input, so you can easily use this as a backup audio source out of a DJ speaker or soundboard. I also have the Zoom H1, which used to be the recorder we used for lav mics, but has since been retired from that position. However, I do still like to use these to pick up unmiked instruments at a ceremony. And finally, I have the Tascam DR40 as our main recorder. We use this in combination with three different audio cable options to capture audio from a DJ or venue's mic receiver, soundboard, or speaker. And I go more in depth on those cables in a video that I'll link up here and down below. So the first part of the day is prep. And if you tend to use ambient audio in your films, this would be a great time to pop your Rode VideoMic Pro onto the top of your camera. In fact, just to show you, here is the audio coming straight from my Sony a7S II built-in microphone. And here it is again with the Rode VideoMic Pro sitting on top of my camera, which is clearly a big difference. During this time, you might also record vows or letter readings. The Rode VideoMic Pro can certainly be used here in the right settings, but I prefer to throw on one of the lav mics on the bride or groom in this situation. Moving on to the first look where I would always use a lav mic over an on-camera mic as you're typically going to be a bit further away to give the couple space. I usually only mic up the groom for this as they tend to stay nice and close to each other. The next phase of the day is the ceremony, and I like to have as many audio sources as possible for this. Depending on the venue, I'm going to try to get a main feed from the DJ or sound system and run that into my Tascam DR40. Ideally, this will pick up everybody who talks, including the couple, as well as any music or instruments, and give you that all-in-one clean audio source. However, that's not always something you can rely on. So I will use my lav mics to mic up the groom and the officiant in most cases. There's some scenarios where I have mic the bride, but I tend not to do that. I know others who do, but that's just my preference. If there are unmiked instruments being played, I'm gonna bust out a Zoom H1. I'm gonna set it on the floor, letting these onboard mics capture that audio. Similarly, if there is a podium that might have multiple people speaking from it, I'm gonna gaff tape a Zoom H1 and run a lav mic all the way up the podium right next to that mic. This system pretty much guarantees that you will get a solid audio source from at least one place, and perhaps more importantly, that even if something fails, you're still gonna have a source to turn to. The last phase of the day is the reception, and the setup works similarly to the ceremony. The DR40 goes into the DJ system in some way, shape, or form. You can check my video on audio cables for all the options I use and why. And then I use the DR10X, which plugs into that same system somewhere as a backup. Of course, whenever you're plugging into another system, whether it's at the reception or ceremony, make sure to bring some headphones and listen to the signal, making sure the levels are good, and that there isn't any extra noise that you don't want. If all sounds good, then I typically just roll with that setup. If there is some buzzing noise or something I don't like or that makes me worried, I will typically throw a lav mic on any person giving a speech or I'll add one of my mics to a mic stand. So there you have it, my brief yet complete breakdown of what I'm using and when I'm using it throughout the day to help guarantee good clean audio for my wedding films. I mentioned a lot of other videos in this, which I'd recommend checking out as I go into a lot more depth with each piece of gear in those. 
I hope you found this updated video helpful, and as always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.